y'all, this is Marley K. Hope y'all are well. I want to talk about the year of Jubilee because the Pope was talking about it. And I, that's why I'm talking about it because, you know, you got to keep up with the devil because he's busy. Anywho, uh, the year of the Jubilee is huge. And I think because of the awakening and because we are learning who we are, I'm learning who I am and the significance of these um times that were originally observed by the Hebrews, I feel like it's really important for us to have this conversation and then understand some things. Um, uh, it just kind of, I guess, be another lesson about how the adversary changes times and seasons. And this is why so many of our people are confused. This is why so many Christians don't know their head from their behind. And this is why um, I believe We must have grace for people, even though it's so tiring, so frustrating that people will not wake up and listen to us and see what we see. You have to see that these folks have been confusing us for a long time. They've been changing stuff for a very long time to intentionally keep us confused. So um, let's get into this. Um, So first of all, the year of the Jubilee in the Roman Catholic Church is a celebration that is observed on a certain special on certain special occasions and then they celebrate one for every 25 years so every 25 years they celebrate a jubilee year or the year of the jubilee that's what they call it under certain conditions when a special indulgence is granted to members of the faith by the pope who acts as god for them and confessors are given special faculties, including the lifting of censures. I'm not Catholic, so I don't know nothing about none of that stuff. But I'm assuming that um, there's not anything good. And the Pope has power to restore uh, privileges or abilities to speak or um, prevent people from being banned or, I guess, lift bans. Um Kind of like what God does, but okay, anyway. It resembles, listen to this, it resembles the Old Testament, which we are under, if you are Hebrew, true Israel, Jacob, Israelite. It resembles the Old Testament Jubilee, in which every 50 years, the Hebrews celebrated a year of perfect rest. Emancipated slaves, which is very important and I feel I feel as though this is tied into why a lot of the royals in Europe are abdicating their thrones. I feel like there's something very significant about maybe 2025 or 2030 that's coming up. I'm not sure. Uh, it shall be revealed. And restore hereditary property. And I feel like this is another significant thing because Those of us who are awakened, we are awaiting to be restored. We are awaiting to um, be removed from captivity. We are looking to go to the wilderness and we are looking to go back home to the promised land, the true promised land that was given to us where we will rule alongside our king, but does not seem to be based on it. So I don't know what what that means, um, but I guess they're trying to say that what we practice today is not the way that the Hebrews originally practiced. And y'all know that the Roman Catholic Church basically has turned everything upside down. Like people don't know anything. We don't know the original ways that the Hebrews practice because so many things have been changed and so much stuff has been hidden. So I just felt like this was something that was worthwhile discussing because I've heard people talk about Jubilee years, but I didn't know what it was associated with and I didn't think it was significant to me. But now that I know who I am and now now that I know where I am and now that I know who changed all the laws and rules and times and seasons and ordinances and got us celebrating Christmas and all kind of stuff, It's important. And so it's something that I feel like we need to know so that we can do some research and understand what we can expect, because we should be expecting to be emancipated. We are enslaved. We are literally living in captivity and our hereditary property has been taken from us. We don't have any property. We have nothing. 
So I'm expecting restoration and emancipation for me and my people. And that's why I'm talking about it. So um, it says Pope Boniface established the Holy Year in 1300 as a centenary observance. In 1342, Clement reduced the interval to 50 years. And in 1470, Paul II reduced it to 25 years. So listen to this. This is another reason why you should not be celebrating Christmas. The year begins on Christmas Eve with the opening of the Holy Doors at the Roman Basilicas of St. Peter, St. John Lateran, and St. Paul outside the walls, and St. Maria Maggiore, and ends with the closing on the following Christmas Eve. So I don't know if that means Jubilee will begin this Christmas Eve or will it begin next Christmas Eve. But in any event, this ought to let you know Christmas ain't no, ain't nothing holy about day Christmas. That's why you ought to be turning it loose and letting it go. Since the 1500, since 1500, the Jubilee has been extended to the whole world. So they push this stuff out throughout everywhere. This is why we're celebrating all kind of stuff. We don't even know what we're doing. Fo during the year following the Holy Year and certain churches in each diocese are des designated for visitation. So I just found that interesting. And so it says, since the, the, at least 1560, special jubilees have been declared. That year, the, the occasion was the Council of Trent for which the guidance of the Holy Spirit was invoked. Ooh, have mercy. Special Jubilees have been declared for a Pope's 50th anniversary in the priesthood at the close of the Second Vatican Council in 1965 to promote the knowledge and application of the Council's achievements mm, mm, mm. and on many other occasions. So, um, Oh, it's just terrible. <laughs> so this is Pope Francis I declared 2016 an extraordinary jubilee of mercy to encourage Catholics to practice corporal and spiritual acts of mercy. Who can, only one person can give mercy, but okay. Such as feeding the hungry or forgiving wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. Okay, anyway. To this end, he also gave all priests the temporary authority to grant absolution for abortions, a power he made permanent in an apostolic letter issued in 2016. That's when the C around the time that time came out. So anyway, if y'all can't tell what y'all are working with, we, we in trouble. These people are... Um, just say they're not, they're not people we should be following. I'm going to just say that. Okay. So getting back to the year of Jubilee, why it's significant and why I don't know if this is why royals are leaving, they're abdicating their thrones, but it's just very interesting, the timing of everything. I don't know what happened to my story. It just disappeared. Okay. So this came out four days ago. So it says, Pope Francis tells Rome to clean up its act before 2025 Holy Year. So I'm not sure if this is going to be an actual Holy Year or if it's a year that they claim to be holy. I'm not sure if it's aligned in any way with the he, um, Hebrew Jubilee, year of Jubilee, but we shall see. It says, Pope Francis on Sunday said the city of Rome has to improve its basic services for residents and visitors before the start of the Holy Year 2025 that is expected to draw tens of millions of pilgrims. Francis made his comment at the Vatican's traditional year in Vespers of Thanksgiving, known as the Te Deum, about six hours before the start of the new year. Are we working each in his own way to make the city a sign of hope for those who live and those who visit, live here and those who visit, he asked in his homily in St. Peter's Basilica. The mayor of the city that is plagued by inefficient 
public transport, overflowing garbage bins and traffic congestion, was sitting in the first row. The Pope later shook his hand. Mm -mm -mm. Francis 87 said the city is city in particular needs to become more user friendly for the elderly and those with mobility problems. In most neighborhoods, particularly outside the center, wheelchair users and the elderly have to navigate their way around cars parked on sidewalks or blocking mobility ramps, usually with impunity for their owners. Francis said the city needs simple decorum and normal functionality because a more livable city for its residents is also more welcoming for everyone. Rome hosts a holy year, also known as a jubilee year. At least every 25 years, pilgrims flock to the city to pray as its many holy sites and uh, receive special blessings. The city's notorious traffic has been made even worse recently because of construction sites in preparation for the 2025 holy year, including road underpasses and overdue extensions to its small subway system. So they are preparing for a jubilee year. And I don't know what they do in their jubilee year. Probably some wicked. But anyway, we should be aware that it's coming. It's danger. Um, and why they had to change it, I do not know. So, um, oh, my thing just kind of went away. I don't know what happened. Okay, so let me let me go over this. So this says this is about the list of jubilee years. So how is the jubilee year calculated? When have they occurred since before and after the time of Jesus? And when will they take place in the future? So it says God command, and this came from the BibleStudy.org site. So it says, God commanded ancient Israel, which is us, we are the ancestors of ancient Israel, Israelites, prior to celebrating a jubilee to observe every seventh year as a sabbatical period. We can't do that because we're in captivity and we can't do that because we don't even know the years. We don't know how to count the years. We don't know how to count the moons. We don't know how to do nothing. We just over here living off the Gregorian calendar that the adversary gave us and we just we just in captivity. That's all I can say. These unique and holy times, which likely started on Tishri 1, were also known as land Sabbaths. See Leviticus 25, 2 Chronicles 36, 21, or years of release, Deut Deuteronomy 15, 1 through 2, and 31, chapters 31, um, 10, verse 10. So it said, God speaking to Moses to speak to the children of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land, which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath to the Lord. You shall sow your field six years, but in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath rest of the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. And I remember, this is so interesting that we're going over this because I remember when I was a little girl here in the South, um, Farmers would observe that. They would not plant. Like if they had a field and they planted on it six years, they would plant extra the sixth year and then they would let that land rest and then they may plant another field. So they have multiple fields or multiple plots where they could alternate. Or they just wouldn't plant. Some, some farmers wouldn't plant anything. Or if people had gardens, like they just didn't do it. And I remember as a little girl, all these things that our people actually observed and I had no idea why and now I understand that those were our ways of knowing those were our traditions that were handed down culturally by our people verbally somehow um they were able to to maintain that and so now we've gotten away from growing our own food we don't have fields that houses with no fields and um, so, and we've gotten away from our ways of knowing, so we don't know a lot of these things. But I just remember these practices, and I, every time I re read something and I recall how people in the South used to do this, I'm just in awe because in my lifetime, I, I recall it. So um, it says seven sets of seven years, which included seven sabbaticals, were then to be observed before a jubilee year could be declared. 
and it says, and you shall number seven Sabbaths of years to you, seven times seven years, and the time of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be 49 years to you, Leviticus 25 and 8. It says the Jubilee was declared after this, this set of 49 years. It began on Tishri 10, the Day of Atonement, or Yom Kippur, and ran to the next Day of Atonement. And I just say the Day of Atonement. Then you shall cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the 7th month in the Day of Atonement. The trumpet shall sound throughout all your land. Your land. We can't even observe these things because we're not in our land. We're in captivity. So, you know, I, I don't know how a lot of people feel about this. A lot of things we can't observe and we can't practice the way that we should as as descendants of Israelites because we're not in our land and our cap captors will not allow us to practice our ways. Um, we don't even have our own identity. It was stolen. So... The people with the stolen identity have the rights and privileges and the label to practice what we're supposed to be practicing, which is wild, but okay. Um, so um, I'm not going to continue to go into this, but as you can see, some of these years, um, they're not always even. So Jesus' declaration. So it says, Jesus' ministry began on September the 11th, 9-11, 9-11. And so think about some of these dates and think about some of the things that happen on these particular dates. And then you start to see just how wicked and in your face the adversary is. On the, in 26 AD, on the Day of Atonement. This day was the start of a jubilee period as evidenced by the fact that Christ, um, a few months later, quoted Isaiah 61, 11. I'm sorry, 61, 1 through 2, Luke 4, 18 through 19. This quote, the Lord, uh, which the Lord applied to himself, contains a phrase to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This phrase is a reference to the Jubilee. Um, and there was given him, Jesus, the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had unrolled the scroll, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For this reason, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal those who are brokenhearted, to proclaim pardon to the captives and to recover and recover of sight to the blind, to send forth in deliverance those who have been crushed to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And so this my thoughts. I don't know, because I'm not a scholar of nothing, but I feel like because we, this is the awakening, our captivity is ending, it's time for the exodus. We see all these different things happening. They're proclaiming a year of jubilee. I just, I don't know if there's a connection, but something is happening in the spirit. And if you read this um, scripture, it could be us because we are brokenhearted. We are captive. Our people are blind. We need deliverance. We have been crushed and we are ready. A lot of us are ready to, to proclaim <laughs> the acceptable year of our Lord or our King or our Creator. Um, and it says, today the scripture is being fulfilled in your ears. So it says Luke 4, 17 through 19 and then 21. So um, if you look at the Jubilee years now, 1986 to 1987 was the last one. So I don't know when uh, the future, oh, so they have them here. Um, future Jubilee years, it says Hebrew Civil Year is October 13th 
2035 to October the 1st, 2036. And then 2084 to 2085. I don't even know if we're going to be around that long. I pray not. But anywho, I thought that was a very interesting um, interesting discussion. And then when you talk about the um, Jubilees and the royal family, this is something else that I wanted to go over right quick. Um, because they also talk about how the jubilees are tied to them so royal jubilees are an occasion to celebrate the life and the reign of a monarch and are significant events which are celebrated around the world though the concept of the jubilee began in biblical times so the the year of jubilee was taken from the hebrews and now everybody practices something that was for us so you see how things that were related to us have been taken and tainted turned around and all kinds of stuff intertwined up in it and we are all lost and turned out this is why we need to do our own research and understand why we practice and observe a lot of things that we observe because i had no clue about any of this till i started researching about the year of the jubilee and i want to know why why are these royals leaving when it's time for them to celebrate their jubilee so I don't know. Today, the term is mostly closely associated with the royal family and the ceremony and spectacle which the term symbolizes. So in the New Testament here, and this is from the Royal UK, it says in the New Testament, Jesus presents himself as the one who brings the old jubilee to completion because he has come to preach the year of the Lord's favor. And they use Isaiah 61 61 1 through 2 but in the roman catholic church jubilees began to be celebrated in 1300 a.d and are years of forgiveness of sins and reconciliation well they ain't reconciled with us so i don't know what they're doing they celebrate they are celebrated every 25 years the most recent year of jubilee was 2000 which is why they are all geared up for 2025 um, so anyway, it's just very interesting. All this stuff is interesting. So it says Royal Jubilee celebrates significant periods in monarch reigns in the national life. Few British monarchs have achieved reigns of 50 years and golden jubilees are very rare. There are few records of how, if at all, Henry, Edward, and James and one celebrated their 50 year milestones. Uh, the first British monarch to mark 50 years on the throne in a significant way was George III, followed by Queen Victoria. The Queen had, has had significant jubilee celebrations in 1977 for her silver jubilee, 2002 for her golden jubilee, and 2012 for her diamond jubilee. So, um, in any event, I just wanted to share how these folks then stole something else out of the Torah or the Bible and took it and turned it into something else that was never meant to celebrate them. It was meant for um, our creator. We really need to do as much research as we can while we still can. Um, I was thankful that I ran across this. I was just curious about applications of thrones and this happened to come across this and start thinking well what about what is the year of jubilee what does that mean where did it come from come to find out it got everything to do with us and so it goes back to what i'm always saying everything that is happening in this world is about us and we need to learn as much as we can so that we can be obedient come out of this system um, learn how we are being disobedient when we uh, follow their ways of knowing and not our own ways of knowing. We need to get back to our roots, get back to our books, get back to our practices and observances and learn. And I know we're not going to be able to um, practice much of anything until we get out of captivity, but knowing is half the battle. If we can know a lot of this stuff, we'll be in a lot better shape than we are now. Um, and I feel like it would 
really causes us to change our behavior. So the more I learn, the more it makes me want to come out of this system and the more it makes me want to learn more about my people. We've been taught we ain't nothing. We don't come from nowhere. We don't we don't know nothing about ourselves. We just this hidden people. We got all the history. We are history. And so we need to be studying to show ourselves approved and learn as much as we can about who we are, about how our culture and history has been taken from us and how so much of um, the children of the corn's life really is an imitation of who we are. There ain't nothing without us. And that's my conclusion. I'm going to end it there. If it wasn't for us and our culture, they would be nothing because they've stolen pretty much everything about us. They've stolen our identity too. Um, So not only did they steal it, they changed a lot of it so that we would never find out. And the more you study, the more you learn. Um, you know, there are practices that we should be practicing, but we can't because we're in captivity and because we they've changed times and seasons um, that we don't know where we are and who we are and what time it is and when we're supposed to be doing certain things. We don't even know how to do those things because so much stuff has been taken away from us. That is why we are going to the wilderness when we get uh, delivered from our captivity so that we can heal and learn the ways of our father, our creator, so that we can rule in the next kingdom the way that he wants us to, so the land can heal and everything can heal and things will be in order. So it's very important now, if you're not trying to learn and be in order now, you ain't going to be learning later. You're probably going to be here burning up with the rest of the heathens. So learn while you can, people. Let us all learn while we can. All right. Please like this video, share it, and subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. Again, I'm not a scholar or nothing. I just ran across something and I shared it with y'all because I thought it was interesting. And it's tied to if you're an Israelite, um, a true Israelite, or if you're a Gentile, cleaving on to us. Um, it's just something that we need to know. There are so many things. We've all been misled. And so we're all learning together. And when I learn something, I like to share it with my people. So um, with that said, my battery is dying. So I'm going to end this video. Follow me on Odyssey, Rumble, Facebook, Instagram. Links are in the description. And if you'd like to support the channel, links for Venmo and coffee are also in the description. Keep prepping, keep praying, keep seeking the most high, repent for your sins daily, and obey those laws, statutes, and commandments because we are all tangled up in our underwear and we need to get back in order. All right, this is Marley Kay, and I'm out.